Hello coders and welcome to part four of the dynamic UI scripting series. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create your own button brancher system. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Here we have a basic button layout. Now if I click one of these buttons, I'm going to be able to expand some more buttons and I can click on these other buttons to expand more buttons. Okay, so this is what I'm going to call a button brancher system. Um, as you can see, they have predefined widths between each of them. And what I can do is I can even scale down my screen size and um, everything stays the way you would want it to stay. So if my screen size is really small, I only want my buttons to take up at any time about 40% of the height of the screen. Okay, no, so no matter what size, how large or how small my, uh, my screen is, my buttons are going to take up the right amount that I want. Okay, so this is the multi-resolution portion which we will be getting into later. Okay, so this is what I would call a linear spawning uh, method. Now I have a circular spawning method as I'll show you. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw that but uh, I'll go ahead and resize so it updates. Okay, so what I have is I have the buttons spawning around this point right here. So if we look over here in my, okay, if we look in my scene view, uh, this is my button brancher. Now one thing I want to note is that anything the button brancher script is attached to will be able to spawn buttons. Okay, so this button brancher right here, this item has a, has the script attached to it and it's spawning these buttons in a circle around it. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about right here, that circle around it. Um, and what I have is the ability to even spawn more buttons off of these buttons just like I did with the linear methodology okay and so I can have multiple um, I can even have multiple extensions like this alright and so another thing that I did with this button brancher is um, two different modes of spawning one is a slide out method and another is a fading at the position method okay so you can see the two differences there it's pretty subtle but um, the more styles the more options you have the better and here's the linear approach as well, so you can mix and match as you please. Okay, so let's talk about how it is that I implemented this. Let's go ahead and hop over to the script. Now, what I want to be explaining uh, in this tutorial is the setup. Okay, so I have these four helper classes that are going to really um, help the script do what it needs to do. Uh, the first one is going to be a button scaler class. All right. Uh, now, before I get into that, I will mention that I added two using statements, one for the Unity U Engine unity engine ui because we'll be requiring you uh, ui data types such as buttons and text and then i added the system collections generic using statement because we're going to be using dynamic lists to hold our buttons all right actually just one dynamic list all right so the button scalar class this is going to handle um, basically resizing the uh, ui elements the button elements and making sure that they only take up the amount of uh, screen that we want them to okay and what it's essentially going to be doing is resizing the buttons, okay? And that's all it, it caters to is buttons. So two scale modes, match width height and independent width height, okay? So match width height, that's gonna be for the square buttons. That's what I used for the circles. And the independent width and height, so we can have recta rectangular scaling, which is what I used for the, f the first buttons on the first uh, demonstration. All right, moving on down, we have this reference button size. Okay, and so what I do in my button brancher, um, let's take a look at that real quick. What I do in my button brancher is I set a reference button size and then I have a reference screen size. So these are basically my default values. Um, and what I did with the reference screen size is I just basically took the screen size uh, from the canvas scale mode. So if you hop over to the canvas's component for the, the scaling, uh, they use the same reference resolution, so I thought, hey, why not? I'll use it too. And it ended up working out pretty well. Okay, so what the purpose of the reference resolution or the reference values is, is so we can set up ratios um, to resize our buttons. So what I do is I have the reference button size and I have the reference screen size, and then I have the new button sizes, which is what we're going to be setting. Okay, and so this is where we set it. We have an initialized method that I'm going to call at different points in my program. And I'm going to be passing the reference button size. Okay, and then I'm going to be passing the reference screen size. Uh, and then I'm going to be passing a scale mode. All right, and what I'm going to be doing is setting the these values inside the button scaler class. And uh, so I set the mode and I set the reference button size and I set the reference screen size. So this is basically like my constructor for this class. 
uh, and then I set the new button size based on these values. Okay, so if the mode is independent width and height, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the X component of the new button size and the Y component of the new button size. Because again, we're going to be using, uh, we're going to have the capability to use different values for each of these. And the reason that I thought this was necessary was because I, I wanted to make sure that if I had a square button, that it would remain square. Okay, so I created this other mode for match width and height and I set the X component and then I just set the Y component equal to the X component after it's calculated. Now, how did I come up with this? Well, it's really just a ratio um, of the reference positions or the reference sizes and the sizes that I want. So what it came out to be was reference, uh, reference button size dot X times screen width divided by the reference screen width, okay? And uh, so that's kind of one of those things. If you if you are familiar with creating your own ratios, it's pretty simple. But if you aren't, um, well, I guess that's not really something I want to explain in this tutorial. Uh, but you can look it up on Google how ratios work and why they're really necessary. But that's essentially what I did here. Um, okay, so that is the button scaler. Again, going to handle resizing our buttons so that uh, we can have multi-resolution capabilities. All right, so let's bump on down to reveal settings. Okay, so our reveal settings are gonna be uh, linear and circular. Okay, so these are the two options that we're gonna use. I showed you both of these in the beginning of the tutorial. And then we're gonna have a translate smooth and a fade smooth. Now these smoothing variables I've mentioned before in previous tutorials are just, all they are is to set um, how fast or slow you want something to happen. Um, and so the translate smooth is going to determine if we're sliding the buttons out, how fast we want them to move. The fade smooth is going to determine how fast we want to fade the buttons in or out. Okay. And then we have a reveal on start. Now this reveal on start, I typically only use um, for the initial button branch. So whenever there's nothing on the screen and I want some buttons to show up, that's going to be the one that reveals on start. Okay. Because otherwise, if I uncheck reveal on start, no buttons are going to show up and thus I won't be able to do... Um, sorry, this, that was the wrong one. Thus, I won't be able to do anything with my um, menus because no buttons are showing up. Okay, so that's the purpose of reveal on start. Okay, so let's move on back to the script. Um, let's see, more on reveal settings. We have opening and spawn. Now, these are variables I'm going to be using uh, further down the script. We'll go over that later. All right, so then we have the, the two other classes which are actually going to handle the settings for how our uh, buttons are going to animate. Okay, so the linear spawner is going to have a reveal style, and the reveal styles are slide to position or fade in at position. I, and uh, I think in the beginning you guys saw how that was working. So I had some buttons sliding out, and other buttons were fading in at the position they were uh, required to be at. And then I have a direction. So our linear spawner is going to be able to spawn our buttons in any direction. We can set the x and y uh, variables based on that. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how that will work. All right, so this, uh, let's see, this is the script that, or this is the brancher that was linear. Okay, so what I can do is I can change the direction. I'll, I'll go ahead and add some Y. Um, I'll add some value in the Y. So you'll see that it actually comes down as well. So it, it moves over and it comes down. And as you can see, it's dropping down just a little bit right there. All right, now if I do uh, negative one, then we'll get a straight diagonal. Okay, so this, uh, this system is going to allow you to spawn your buttons in any direction that you want, all right? Okay, so we have the linear spawner. Now, some other things on here is we have a base button spacing. And the, the, reason is we, the reason we have a base for this value is because the button spacing is going to be changing based on our screen, uh, our screen size. Okay, and, and again, if our, if our let's say that we have this at five and then we scale our screen way down, way down, way down. Whenever we uh, spawn our buttons, the, the spacing is gonna look too big. So this is why we need to resize our spacing um, whenever the screen, cha uh, screen size changes. Okay, and uh, what we do is then we have our actual button spacing. So this is the value that's gonna be changing based on our base button spacing. And this is the method that handles all of that. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm working with ratios here, but first, before I calculate a ratio, since this isn't going to be a vector 2 I'm trying to get, it's going to be a float, all I do is I add the screen size.x and the screen size.y, and I divide it by 2. So I'm just getting the average of the, the reference screen size, and uh, I'm getting the average of the current screen size. And then what I'm doing is I'm creating a ratio based on the 
uh, screen float and the reference screen float. And that's going to actually bring my button spacing down or up based on how small or large my screen size is. Okay, so that covers that. Let's go on down to the circular spawner. Okay, so just like the linear spawner, the, the circular spawner is going to have two reveal styles, slide, up, slide to position and fade in at position. Again, you guys saw how that was working before. Then we have an angle struct, okay? And what I do is I create this struct down here. It's going to have a min angle and a max angle. Um, and the min angle is going to be where the button starts spawning at in relation to the button brancher. The max angle is going to be the maximum angle that the button branchers must stop, um, must stop at. And again, that angle is in reference to the button brancher, all right? Okay, and then I have uh, a base distance from brancher. So think of this as the radius. Okay, this is the radius of the circle of buttons that we're going to have. And this is just like the spacing that we had in the linear spawner. And so this is the base. And so as you can imagine, we're going to need to resize the, uh, the distance of the radius um, or the distance of the circle from the center point. Okay, so that's what this is for. And I have the method that, that handles that as well. So fit distance to screen size. Uh, I'm going to be passing in the reference screen size. And I'm doing the same exact thing as I did with the linear spawner where I'm taking the averages of the reference screen float and the averages of the actual current screen float. And I'm creating a ratio based on that to set the new distance uh, from the brancher. Okay. And so this is something that's going to be called each time the screen gets changed. All right, so that's going to cover all of the classes that are going to set up this script. In the next few tutorials, we're going to be talking about how we can actually add or use these classes to add the functionality that we want to have to our button brancher. So we're going to talk about a few different styles, such as the sliding and the fading. And, um, and then we're going to talk about how we can get some linear action and some circular action with our button branchers. All right, guys. Um, I hope you guys like this tutorial. I hope it was really informative for you. But as always, thanks for watching. This has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial.